Now that we understand the fundamentals of file permissions, let's talk about how to change those file permissions from the command line. And we're going to be making use of two Unix commands, chown and chmod. So those are the ones we're going to be using to change the ownership and to change the permissions. Let's see them at work. So here I am at the command line where we left off before. I'm still inside B2B Sandbox. I'm also just going to real quick go into the Sandbox and create a new file that we can use to work with here and not mess up our other files. So I'll open up TextMate and open a new file and I'll just say this is a file for testing file permissions and then I'll save it in that B2B sandbox folder and we'll call it file underscore permissions dot PHP and it doesn't actually have any PHP in it but just to keep it the same as the other files we'll give it that extension so here's file permissions dot PHP we see it right there let's do our ls dash la trick again to do a list and we'll now see file permissions.php shows up here and we can see it has the same permissions read and write for the owner which is me kevin and for both the group and other it has the ability to read the file which allows our web server to read it which allows it then to serve up what's in the file now just to be clear when we talk about executing a file that's not executing it on the web server all the web server has to do is be able to read in the script and it will do whatever's in the script. When we talk about executing, we're talking about having more of a .exe file or something that we can actually run from the command line. Execute's not going to play a big part when we're working with the web server. Either we can read or write a file or we can't. You'll remember from the last movie, I was able to find out that my Apache was running as www. And that may be true for you and also maybe nobody or Apache or something else. I'm going to go ahead and just show you how to change file permissions to have a different owner. And I'm going to do that with that chown command. But before I do that, I'm going to type in sudo. Now, you may have used sudo a few times in the past and not really known what it did. It basically says, do this command with the highest level permissions that the system has. So if I'm allowed to be a sudo person, if I'm allowed to have that super user ability, that's what the SU stands for, super user, then I will have those super user permissions. So with top level permissions, try to change the owner to www for file permissions.php. And it came back, it didn't give me any response, it just did it. If I type ls-la though, we'll now see that it has changed the owner to www. So now that the ownership has changed, www has read and write permissions, Kevin just has read permissions. So we've changed who is the user for this file. Now we can do the same thing to change permissions. We can say sudo and then chmod, and then we're gonna pass in the permissions that we want. And there are a number of different ways we can do that. We can use the symbolic notation that we saw before, that R, W, and X, but I'm gonna do it with the octal notation that we talked about. I'm gonna go ahead and for now just say 777, so you'll see what it does with file permissions.php. All right, now let's do ls-la and see that again. And notice now that 777 opened it wide up so that everybody can read, write, and execute. It doesn't matter who the owner is. Everybody has the ability to access this file. Now we can have something that's a little more locked down than that. I'll just simply change this to be 7, let's say, 44. Actually, 644 is what we had before. I'll go back to that first. 644. And you'll see that now it's back to what it was. This is 6. This is four, and this is four. So now I've set it back to what it was. Let's try changing it so that Kevin doesn't have access anymore. So let's just say 600. Kevin might be part of staff. So let's go ahead and make sure that staff also doesn't have access. So it'll be 600. The www user will still have those read and write privileges. And now let's just try opening that file up. So I'll come back here into my file system. I'll double click on file permissions. You see it comes up blank. And I type hello and hit save, it says, oh, it wants your password. So it won't let me do it because I don't have enough permissions and it doesn't allow me to see what's in there. So the important point that you need to take away from this is that in order for your PHP to work successfully, you need to make sure that the file is readable. Then the web server can read it in and do whatever it asks it to do. However, now that we're about to start doing uploading of files, we're also going to need to have directories that are writable so that we can actually write to them. And when we start doing things like log files, we're gonna need them to be both readable and writable so that we can add entries to a log file and read back what's there as well. 
Now, in addition to being able to issue command line instructions like chown and chmod, we can do the same thing from inside PHP. And that's what we'll look at in the next movie.